Welcome to this part two of us creating a Next.js blog with a headless CMS. So in the last part, in part one, uh, we created a Next.js project with some uh, templates. So we kind of prepared it for using real data. So in this part, we'll be creating a Prismic project. So you can see here that I have Prismic uh, open. We'll be creating a new project there and we'll set up our templates there, create some dummy data or sorry, not dummy data in this case, some real data. And, um, and then we'll uh, use Prismic API to connect it to our next JS project. And finally, we'll deploy the project. So let's get started. Code with Victor. Code with Victor. So I'm logged into Prismic, so let's Go to dashboard and want to create a new repository. And let's call it, um, I wonder if my blog is available. It isn't. My blog test, maybe. My blog T is apparently available. So let's use that. And it's just called my blog. Uh, what is your role? I'm a developer. I'm using Next.js. This isn't really necessary. It's just. I believe it's for Prismic to know who I am, uh, but it's not uh, connected anyway um, for uh, digitally, at least. And I'll be using the free uh, version for this. Now let's see, I'm creating my repository and we have my blog here. So if we go back to our blog here, uh, so the different kind of pages that we want, we want to have a blog post template and and an about or maybe about is maybe a content page so let's have a content page um, template and also a blog post so uh, what's the main language you will be writing content in that would be english so let's see united states english okay so we want to create our types here. So um, let's see, blog post is repeatable because it can be uh, multiple posts. So blog post, create this. Okay, so for blog post, we want a title. You know what, they have title here, but I prefer to just use key text or maybe how does title look? Yeah, because title have a couple of extra features, which I don't really care for. So I just use key text, which is just the uh, text. So let's call that title instead. So we have a title and we'd like to have some content and content should be, let's see, that should be a rich text. So let's call that content. And we can allow, um, let's see, let's remove these parts because H1 and H2 is used for SEO on our page. We have a H1 as the main title and H2 as the secondary title. Uh, but let's allow H3, H4, H5, H6 um, and links. Let's just remove these parts just for simplicity and maybe this one as well. Okay, cool. So now I have content and oh, we're not running the project anymore, so let's run that. That is, we have the content title and we want to have a date as well. So let's see here. We we'll go a date. Maybe that should be about so publish date or sorry, publish date. Okay, I think that's enough for our blog post. So we have the blog post type and then we want to have our a content page type so content page and for content page we also want to have a title and we want to have rich text which would be content so let's do the same thing here we remove these parts for simplicity i think we remove this part as well mm, i don't remember but let's do like that so now we have a content page and we have a blog post type. So for 
let's create our pages here. So we first we want a content page called about and let's have some content. Um, actually, let's create some lorem ipsum. Here we go. This is our uh, about about me lorem ipsum. Okay, so now we save and we publish. So not now when I publish, it will be available in the API. So now it's like public this page. So let's create some blog post. So this could be blog post uh, number one. And it was actually created uh, the 1st of July. And this is actually my first blog post. Okay. And then let's create a more difficult second blog post. So um, this could be later and um, blog um, uh, my second post. So by more difficult, I mean we can have like a first para paragraph and a second with, uh, with let's see, bold and italic so this can be italic this can be bold and actually we had list as well so first item second item okay because now we need to handle all these different cases with bold and italic and stuff so cool now we have these so now we want first of all we want to here we want to fetch uh, all the blog posts or maybe should we do about first? No, let's start here. So uh, let's go back to our next JS documentation. Uh, data fetching. So this is what we want. So in next JS, um, you can either uh, do pure static generation, which uh, right now this page is, it's just a static page or uh, we can use some uh, server-side rendering, uh, which is what we want. We want this to update when uh, we get new uh, blog posts. So to do that, uh, you, you can see here that there are different, uh, different ways to do that. So what we want is to use get static props and get static uh, uh, paths. So paths would be uh, for the blog post pages, but for now we just want get static props. Uh, and what this will do is that uh, when someone enters this page, if it hasn't been created already, then it will be uh, rendered uh, using props from um, get static props. Uh, and you can also, uh, in get static props, you can send a revalidate property, which we'll be, be using so that it will uh, revalidate the page. Um, let's say you wanted to revalidate once every every day or something. Then you can uh, send that in seconds to uh, revalidate. So one day in seconds, you can send that. And then if you enter this page and it doesn't exist, it will be created. But if it already exists, then it will show the statically generated page. But if, uh, if the last created page is older than one day, um, so in my example, it was one day, but you can use any value that you want. But if it's older than one day, then it will revalidate. So that means that it will create a new static uh, page. And the next time someone enters that page, they will see the newly created one. But the first person who enters will see the old one so that it loads instantly. That's a nice feature. So that's what we will be using. So let's go back to our main page here. So here you can see that we had this. Oh, actually, let's do a git commit here. Um, so, okay, let's add all that. And the first one will be called initial. So we can see our changes later. So we want here to be creating a get static props. And you can see here that if we move posts from here to here, um, let's see. So we send pop post to props and posts. 
this should hopefully work. Uh, it, yeah, it does. So now instead of hard coding here, we have it hard coded in get static props. But this means that we can change this. So you can see that this function is asynchronous. So that means that we can uh, load uh, or call uh, the API here. So that's what we want. We want to create uh, call the Prismic API. So let's see how we do that API. Okay, let's let's check the documentation for this. Query the API. Oh, there's actually a Prismic client. Let's see, is that what we want to be using? Maybe it is. Let's check out this in package manager. Okay, let's use this Prismic client. Let's see how that works. Um, so we want to install this first of all. So let's add it, yarn add. Let's see if that works. Yeah. Cool. Uh, let's see how we're supposed to use this. Uh, let's remove part. Change this to import. Let's check if this has a value to see if that. Yeah. Something was uh, was printed there, and then we can let's see if we need any options or not. And we have this as our API endpoint. Let's see like that, and I guess we have a client here now that we can use. Yeah, looks like it. Okay. Um, yeah, let's try it. Or is this a promise, maybe? No? Okay, let's see how we call it. Client.query. So this should give us all the posts, apparently. Let's try that. Data. Okay, here we get uh, yeah, blog post, second blog post, and a content page. But here we only want blog posts. Um, so let's see. Let's try the API browser. Or maybe, uh, how to query. Oh, API query. Okay, we use predicates. Let's see. Document type blog post. Okay, now we get the blog post. Cool. That's what we wanted. And we want it ordered by the date as well. Good thing the examples also use a blog post. So it's very similar to what we wanted. My, uh, I wonder what my means here. It's called date and blog post at least. My. Let's see what that means. Is it something here? Maybe my is like this. Let's see. This is correct. So uh, can we see? We want to see the data here. Let's see. We can see here that there's the actual publication date, but we want to be using our custom uh, date here instead. So you can see here that the first is the second post, and then it's the first post. So let's just see what happens if we change this to see that it actually works the sorting. So it wasn't just a coincidence. And maybe you can't do let's see. It is like that. The blog post one. Let's see, that's the same output. Let's see. Order your result. Oh, here it says the order by field predicate that requires the my prefix. And then it's custom type field. 
and I think we called it date, right? Oh, it's called publish date. Oh, I'm stupid. Let's see. Ah, publish date. So it's not date in our case. So let's see, publish date. Let's see how that looks. Okay, so now uh, the first one is the sec uh, the number two, the latest one, and then it's the older one. Let's see if we change this to be the opposite, just see that it works. Uh, yes, this is now the reverse order, right? Yeah, blog post one. Okay, cool. So now that we know that that works, now we have the correct data. But as you can see, uh, this uh, JSON that we get from Prismic API is quite dif uh, different to um, to this. So uh, maybe we can create a function to convert an item to uh, this data. So for instance, we have, uh, we can create some test for this. So let's create a util and maybe we can call it a convert prismic to, to data, <laughs> to our uh, data. So create the function convert prismic to data, which is a weird name, but uh, it is what it is. And let's create some tests for it. So utils convert prismic to data. Um, so I just copy this. And what we want now is since we have here our test data, I want to look similar to this. So let's uh, test works with simple test. It works with simple data. So the first one is a little bit simpler. So expect convert prismic uh, to equal. So we want this part here Let's see so this is the data that we get from prismic and we want this data to equal something like this so what we want is slug to be uh oh we haven't actually set a slug here so maybe we should add that um so we go to our custom page blog post you see i think I think slug is, yeah, UID is what we want, a unique ID. Let's call it slug. Okay, cool. So that's what we wanted. Let's add that to content page as well. And just to have a unique ID that's more readable. Uh, save changes. And then, oops. And then go to our blog post and update the slug here. So this could be blog post one and publish. And this one could be, oh, it's the same one. It could be called blog post two. The slug here and about page be just about. Okay, so let's see what we get now. Mm, yeah, you can see now that we get a u unique ID, you know, which is more readable. So the slug here will be blog post one, and the title will be um, it will be that content will be just this. Oh, sorry. Um, see. Here we go. So that's a simpler, a simple one. And let's add a test for the more complex one with complex data. 
So for this one, um, let's see, let's copy, copy this. Here we go. And and that data here. Okay. Uh, we can close this. So here what we want is blog post two. The title is my second post. And for content here, it's a little bit more. So content here is actually, uh, let's see, it would be for first paragraph. Um, let's see, first paragraph and then new line. Um, and the new line will say second paragraph. We need to have bold and italic. And then we actually added a list as well. So first item, second item. So this is what we want from this is the most difficult part, actually, to, to do this. But now at least we have tests for it. And before we make the test pass, we can I can show you how, how we will use this. So from here, uh, we have the data. And what we want to do is convert Prismic to data. Details convert Prismic to data. So we have our pose here, and we'll uh, change this part. Let's just comment or let's just remove it. Uh, posts will be so data is, let's see, we have a results here. So data.results and we map that to, um, yeah, we can use convert prismic to data in our map. So this should uh, work eventually. Now it will give an uh, error because. Um, uh, we don't have the correct data yet. Well, let's see. So now we have created our our new tests here. We can see that this fails. So let's make this uh, not fail. So let's see. So we have our data here. Let's start with the, the first part. So the slug will be, uh, let's see, Prismic. And the slug is called UID. So if we do like that, then we can see that at least the slug is correct. And for title, uh, it will be prismic, let's see, data.title. So now slug and title is correct. So now we need content. So content is the most complex part. So actually, let's start with the more complex part here. So we want to convert uh, this prismic array to markdown. Before we do anything else, let's just check if something exists like that. And Prismic rich text to markdown. Prismic rich text. This is much simpler if it already exists. So it looks like it does. So that's good. Uh, let's try this. Mm. It will save a lot of time if it works. Uh, let's see here. Content would be Prismic data content rich text to markdown. Um, okay, they want a uh, list to look like that. That correct? Now yeah, let's try here. Building here. So can I create a list? Let's see. So they want it to look like this. Is that correct? First item. Second item. No, that would mean it creates different lists. Hmm. It didn't quite work this. 
Uh, let's see if I can check the source code of this. See how they do with list. At least this is correct. There shouldn't be a white space between them. Let's see. Convert rich text block. Okay. Let's just do something very simple here. So we have this. So let's just do a replace here. So uh, let's try some regex. Regex pal. Let's see. So this is what we have. Uh, and I like to find this part here. So I want this to be multi line. Uh, let's see. So the start of the line is right, yeah. And like that. And some content. And mm, here. Yeah, this looks like it works. Uh, what I want here is to have a regex to check if it's a list item uh, uh, with an empty space here and then a list item so I can remove this empty space. So uh, let's see here. Empty space regex. Something like this. Uh, uh, let's see here. Empty space regex. Let's see what happens if I do like that. Then everything is removed. Okay, nice. I think you can do like this, right? Uh, yeah. So what I want to have is I want to keep these parts. Actually, I want to keep one new line. So if the regex is like that instead, and if I do, um, oh, actually this should be part as well. We have change here now. Okay. Oh, uh, we don't need that. We can use that like that. Okay, now it, that's uh, the most simple way. So now I just used that, but fixed uh, this issue. Okay, cool. So the test passed. It's surprisingly easy. So now we can see the second post here. We have the first paragraph, the second with bold and italic, and we have our list here. We can see that this is just one uh, UL list. Uh, very nice. So in our archives now we want to do a similar thing oh right uh, one thing that i talked about at the start but i forgot now is to use uh, revalidate so uh, let's see it's called revalidate and you can see an optional amount in seconds after which a page regeneration can occur so when you do this locally with yarn dev which i'm doing right now then it will always revalidate. But once we deploy it, uh, then it will only revalidate. Uh, if we don't have this, then it, it will only create a new page when we do a new build. But if we add some revalidate uh, value, then it will uh, recreate the page. So if we, for instance, this is in seconds, and maybe I want this to revalidate every day. so. Uh, one day in seconds because I can never remember that is 86,000 so let's do like uh, a small comment one day maybe one day in seconds so it's more clear one day in seconds okay so I won't do anything different here but once we deploy like I said it will be different so archives, we will do a similar thing like this. And let's see, archives. So here we have the post as well. So we can let this um, revalidate uh, one day in seconds as well. Let's copy that. 
and right we want the date as well of course um so we can see here that we use the date so we want to add to our convert prismic to data function to add uh, the date as well and there's something else that i missed here uh, let's see oh the prismic client of course uh, and uh, convert prismic let's see right so now we get the error that we don't have a date so that's sad of course we need a date so we can see uh, if we add to our test here we want to extract this publish date to an actual uh, javascript date uh, let's see if we can do like this so here it's six instead of seven because this is zero based and one Uh, and this is three. All right, so let's see if I can do like this. Um, uh, no. Uh, let's see. Wonder how I can check this. Uh, see here do, 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 do. maybe date is an odd uh, value spy on date maybe i can use this let's see um Move this here. Let's see, Let's give us a date. Mock constructor. Hmm. This isn't a good test. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Can I try this in a better way? Okay. So we can do maybe like that to check here and also because here we can just check that we get the correct date value um now we want to see that we get actually this value here spy mark results uh, zero Okay, and that would be this kind of value. Uh, all right, we spy on date. Hmm. Um. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, okay, so the value that we want here. Ah, uh, okay, dates are a little bit difficult to use like this. Maybe we'll change this to instead, let's see, we get here a date like that. Hmm, 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 hmm. And what happens if I miss Okay, that's what we're after at least. Okay, actually let's change this to just have for simplicity's sake. Uh, let's just return a string date instead. And we'll change the format uh, date function. So, um, like this, we get a date like that, and here we get date like this. And change that to that. Oh, 
Publish date. Uh, let's see. It's undefined. And that's because it's in data. Okay, then that works. So now we just need to update our format date to handle strings as well. So, um, so it should handle this being well like that. So this should give an error currently. Nice. Let's update that to wonder if this is enough. Yeah, it's enough. Great. So now it handles strings as well as uh, dates. So this should probably work. Yeah, now we have blog post one with July 1st and my second post. So if I go to my second post, uh, obviously we haven't updated this part. So uh, maybe that's the next thing that we do. So we update the, um, uh, let's see, the blog to instead of using this data, we want to fetch the actual data. So we need to get static props again and like that. But here we want to use, uh, let's see. So, okay, so this is here. So now we want to see if we get the slug somewhere. Let's see if we get it in the context here. Let's see. Oh, get. Oh, so the first error we get here is get static path is required. Um, so we can check here how we do that. Get uh, get static paths. So if I just copy this, uh, then we can see. So either you can fetch all your posts and you can give them paths and um, and you specify what uh, paths that should be rendered. Another way to do this um, is to uh, instead of that, we'll add a paths with an empty array. Let's see if that works actually. Yeah. So when you do an empty array like that, then we specify no pre render paths and it will always, you will always, uh, uh, from, so if uh, the path that you specify here is the ones that will be rendered at build time, um, but any path it will try to render. So we, if we give an empty array, uh, then Nothing will be built on build time, but it will be built uh, as soon as uh, a user tries to access this page. So that's why it's enough with the, an empty array for pods. So this is the simplest way. Uh, let's see. So in context, we could see that we got some, uh, oh, uh, actually this is probably behind me. We can see here that we get some parameters. Um, so we get slug as a parameter. So that's what we want to be using. So context, params, slug. Right, so now we have the slug. So let's see, now we want to query Prismic on this specific slug. And um, so let's see how we do that. Query by unique ID. That's what we want. Um, here, so get by unique id i wonder if i can do like that maybe let's see what we get here uh, let's see unable to encode undefined uh, let's see here do, do, do. oh so type okay so we need to <coughs> send in the type as well so the type here is blog post okay let's see if that works okay so now there we get the data and uh, let's see here so the data we want to send here is convert prismic to data data 
that should be correct probably and then we can change this to this uh, let's see so now we get some kind of error let's see what value we get here uh, so we actually get the correct value why did we get an error previously i'm not sure maybe it had something to do with it not being rendered or maybe it was just slow okay so now these pages work as well so we have a blog post one and my second post uh, nice so uh, let's see, we have the start page, we have archives, and now we just need the about page. And obviously the about page would, will be very similar to, to how we did it here. So let's go to the about page. And instead of data like this, we'll uh, add get static props. And this is not a dynamic URL. The, the blog post is dynamic since it said blog and then the slug, but about is just a static path. So we don't need to supply static paths. The path is always about. So we just need to get static props. And this is a content uh, page, I think it was called. Uh, yeah, content page. And the UID is about. And so that should probably be enough. Let's see here. Uh, it isn't. Let's. Oh, maybe it's the same issue as before. Yeah. This MIG is not the. Okay. Let's see. Uh, one day in seconds is not defined. Um, right. So, since I'm using this same uh, function, convert prismic to data, as in the blog post. Uh, it thinks that a date is available, but obviously we didn't include a date uh, for our content pages. Uh, so instead of writing a new uh, utility function, let's just update our test uh, to add an instance where we don't have a date and uh, make sure that that works. Test uh, if it works without a date. So let's remove publish date and like that. And hopefully this will give an error. But then we know the tests work. Uh, uh, well, it didn't. Now let's see, maybe, maybe this is correct actually, because let's see here. Because here, if this is undefined, then this will be undefined obviously. So let's see why we get this error. Um, oh, undefined cannot be serialized as JSON. So maybe we actually want to make sure that, well, let's have a date, but it will be null instead. So um, let's see, convert prismic that and fall back to null instead of undefined. Okay, that should solve this. Yes, cool. So now we have an about page. So now we have every page that we wanted. We have archives, etc. Oh, we actually get an error here. Let's see. Uh, let's see here. Archives. Uh, where did we get this error? Is it here? Key prop? We have a key. Maybe we don't have a slug. Let's see. Slug. Each child in a list should have a unique key prop. Oh, right. The key prop should be on this wrapper component. I wonder if you missed that in the first as well. Yep, we did. Okay, so that's where that warning was from. Okay, now that warning is gone. Great. We got some other error, I think. Let's see. Yeah. The tag date time is in unrecognized. Oh, right. Uh, let's see. It's actually called date. Oh, okay. Check it out. Date. Uh, oh, it's called time. Okay. Time. 
Okay, great. So now it's correct markup. Okay, so now we have everything. So let's just uh, do a git commit. Um, Make prismic data. Okay. Uh, so now we have a prismic and we have our project here. So now we want to deploy it. So to deploy it, uh, we need first to have a GitHub account, or that's what I will be using at least. I will be using a GitHub account. And then I can push my Git repository to GitHub. And then I can connect it to uh, Vercel which is the creators of Next.js. And they also have a great uh, hosting tool, which I like to use. So let's, let's do that. Let's close some tabs here that we don't need anymore. There we go. And let's go to GitHub. Let's create a new repository, which we call my blog. And let's make it, uh, actually, let's make it public. And let's create that. Cool. And then we can add this remote like that. And then we can push it. Okay, cool. So now we have everything here. It's pushed and ready. So now we go to Vercel, which I will be using. Okay, so we add new project and missing Git repository. Adjust GitHub app per. And we want it to be able to access my blog. Okay, now I have my blog here. Great. Uh, no team. Uh, we'll be using Next.js. And since Vercel is the creators of Next.js, they have a preset for it, so it's very simple. So this is actually, this should be enough to deploy it. I don't think we need to do anything else. So now it's deploying on Vercel and let's, uh, let's wait. You can see here that it fetched the source code and now it's building. So now it's checking all the get static paths to see um, uh, what paths to, to pre-build and uh, also just building the bundle JavaScript and hopefully that should work. Usually you don't uh, stay here looking at it like this. Uh, maybe you just deploy and go take a cup of coffee or something. Uh, but uh, for this tutorial, uh, we'll just wait to see that it deploys. So now it looks like it has deployed everything. So it looks like it's running. So now we can go to, uh, let's see what the URL is, visit. My default URL was this, my blog with seven. So now you can see that it's actually live and deployed. And we have an about page, archives, my second post. You can see that it loads instantly. So yeah, so now, we, now it's deployed. I think that was everything, yeah. So now we have a blog page, a blog website uh, with the Next.js connected to Prismic CMS. And that was it for part two. So let me know in the comments if you have any questions or anything that was unclear. And uh, yeah, see you soon.